I'm, I'm going to turn first to, to David Chalmers in, our, in the second row here, because he has been cited many times here uh, for probably all of you. Uh, you know, a foundational figure in our thinking about uh, consciousness, the easy and hard problems. Now, Philip says you're a dualist. I didn't know there were any dualists left. Um, do you want to, is that a correct explanation of your perspective? And where do you stand on the panpsychism issue? Great. Well, thanks so much for this. It's, uh, it's great to hear uh, perspectives from um, all three of these distinguished thinkers in the, uh, in the field. Interestingly, yeah, we have a Materialist, uh, panpsychist, Mysterian here. <laughs> it kind of sounds like a set up for a joke, right? A Mysterialist, <laughs> a, a Mysterian and a panpsychist walk into a bar. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess um, I'm open-minded about all these issues. And I've got some sympathy with all, of the, uh, with all of the views and quite a lot of sympathy with Philip's panpsychism. But I'm most inclined towards the view that consciousness can't be in explained in terms of anything more fundamental than consciousness. Um, one possibility is that consciousness is present at the base of the physical world, as Philip thinks. But like Ned and like Rebecca, I do think that Philip's view faces a very serious problem of how does, how does the basic consciousness combine to yield our consciousness. So the other alternative is that consciousness is fundamental but not present at the, uh, at the basic level of reality. It emerges at a higher level, and at a certain level, um, you know, some systems are conscious and some are not. Um, this, I think, you basically end up with a view where, I mean, I think this is where you will get to by following the science in the way that Ned wants to follow the science, that is, connect up, do studies of the brain and do studies of consciousness, and find the simplest connecting principles that connect, um, that connect the brain with consciousness. And Ned mentioned some biological theories like the global workspace theory, integrated information theory. No one thinks, though, those are the last word. Those are just a very, very prior word. My hope is that if you actually keep going with those, we'll find fundamental laws of nature that underlie, say, the global workspace theory or the, the, uh, the integrated information theory or whatever the theory is, that we can then say it's a fundamental law of nature that when you have a system of a certain kind, you get consciousness. You're, you're saying that we have yet to find that, that more fundamental law of nature. Basically, my most fervent view here is it's very early days in the science of consciousness. And probably any view that we now have is probably going to be wrong. And I've got my speculation about what might be the truth. Each of these thinkers have their, have their speculation about what might be the truth. I guess I'm interested in the question of since we're all going to be proved wrong eventually, probably, what kind of thing do you think is actually likely or um, has the potential to prove your view wrong? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, I agree with a lot of what Dave says. The, I think the most basic um, point is that w w there are ideas missing here. You know, w my hope is that by doing the science of consciousness, those ideas will develop. But I don't think anybody can, can suppose that the, what we've got so far is what we're going to end up with. Rebecca, how, how might you be shown to be wrong? Mm, if they do it. <laughs> if, if, wait, if the scientists do it? Yeah, I mean, if these new laws of nature emerge, you know, and that would be very interesting and convincing. Um, yes. So in other words, that would, uh, you would no longer be a mysterian. Exactly. Okay, because there would be I would give up my view of the limitations of the human mind. Philip, what would I mean, prove you to be wrong? Yeah, I mean, perhaps I'm sounding, you know, more certain than, than I take myself to be. I'm actually, you know, I'm sympathetic with uh, what Dave is saying that consciousness can't be explained in terms of anything more fundamental than consciousness. Um, the problem with that dualist view is that you end up with two kinds of thing. Better to, it seems to me, all things being equal, it's better to have one kind of thing rather than two kinds of thing. Now, who, you know, who knows? We don't know. Maybe the world is more complicated than 
our simplest hypothesis. But all, look, all you can ever do is work with the evidence we currently have, given our limited situation. And what we've always done in science and philosophy is just try and work out the simplest, in, most intelligible theory that's compatible with what we know. So, yeah, I, I, I feel confident that the view I have is the simplest theory compatible with what we know. But that, that makes me think, you know, 0.6% credence, you know, 60% rather than who knows. But, um, yeah, all you can ever do is, is work with the evidence we currently have.